My name is Ella and I'm 14 years old. I'm Patrick and I'm 29 years old. We, we have, have Prager Willy Syndrome. So what does Ella like to do? Um, Ella loves talking on the phone with her friends. I uh, have Prada Willy really friends, especially. But um, Patrick, it's usually, yeah. Who was on this? Yeah, it's usually FaceTime or Messenger. So um, she doesn't really know how to hold the phone up to her ear <laughs> and talk. She likes going to the gym. She's very competitive with her godfather at the gym. She she doesn't like to push herself that much, but when it's a competition, she will she will try and win. Yeah. I am smart. Very smart at the gym. Uh, she loves her dance classes. Um, I think a lot of it has got to do with the fact that she sees her friends, um, so it's a real social thing. Ella's very social. I have beers and I taught I I I taught big pottery. Pottery behind the PC. Yeah. Yeah. She does occupational therapy, speech therapy and physio. With speech and actually occupational therapy, we're focusing a lot on conversation and social skills. So even though Ella is very social, she often doesn't understand the skills involved to be social. But sometimes if people ask her a question, she doesn't, she doesn't have eye to eye contact, with, especially with strangers or she doesn't um, really think about answers. A lot of it's got to do with her, um, how she identifies her, how she's feeling, her emotions, and um, knowing how to handle it. She's, you know, she's got so many doctors. She's got her endocrinologist, um, who we see twice a year. She's got her pediatrician from birth, who we see twice a year. Uh, sleep doctor, because of her, um, because of Prader Willi syndrome and the fact that she takes um, daily injections of growth hormone, um, she needs to have annual sleep studies to make sure that she doesn't have sleep apnea, which is when you stop breathing during the night um, while you're sleeping. Um, what else has she got? She's got her orthopedic surgeon for her scoliosis. She's got dietitian, obviously the dentist and all of that. Um, she's had ENT for her uh, tonsils and adenoids and that was because she did have sleep apnea at one point. I like doing volunteering, um, like helping people. I, I want to work with, I want to go and work with babies. Do you like babies? Yes, I do. So puppy and cute. She loves babies. Loves babies. Whenever we pass a baby, she has to say hi. Uh, she wants to, I think she mentioned already, she wants to work with babies when she's um, finished school. And she also wears a um, transdermal patch, which is to um, kickstart puberty because she hasn't been through it yet. And she's 14. Yeah, she's 14. And um, because that's also another thing with Prada Willy is that something to do with sexual development, but basically non-existent to some degree. I sometimes feel hungry. And I sneak some food. She's very good with reminding people what to do and she loves the schedule. So now she's worked out that uh, morning tea is between 10.30 and 11 and by 11 she's asking for it. Lunchtime is around 1 for her. So as long as it's not past 1.59, she's still okay with that. And dinner, it's between 6 and 7.
She doesn't like to have things too early and she doesn't like to have them too late either. Yeah, because if it's too early or too late, it means that she might miss out on something else. Like if we have lunch too late, she'll miss out on afternoon tea, which can't happen because she loves her meals. So Ella started, okay, with her, she had really low muscle tone and at her, on her first birthday, Ella still couldn't hold her own head up. We had to actually rest her head on something when we were singing happy birthday to her, but she couldn't hold her head up. And she never learned to crawl, but the way is she's really clever. She actually um, is really good at problem solving. So... The way she got around the house when she couldn't crawl was she rolled her whole body and you would be walking around and you could see Ella at about three years old like rolling around the house just to get from one place to the other. If she she just finds what's easiest for her yeah, yeah. with her ability. Yeah um, and then she started walking at four and a half. side effect of probably is um, well one is really small hands and feet and her feet are pretty okay now yeah. they used to be tiny she's got really small hands but her fingers are long yeah long fingers but also short stature but see Ella from birth um, she was always kind of long like and I, and I, I guess that's just genetics like um, I think if she didn't have Prada Willie she'd probably be tall like you so actually initially she didn't qualify for growth hormones because um, it wasn't covered by the PBS. It was only covered if you had Prader Willi syndrome and you were under a certain height or length. Because she was long when she was a baby, um, she didn't qualify. So we were paying um, for about two and a half years, we were paying $500 a month just to give her growth hormones. And the reason why we wanted to give her growth hormones was it wasn't only to make you taller, but it actually increases muscle tone or muscle body mass. I have others. Um, my legs, my arms, and my back, my self, Prada Willie is prone to scoliosis um, because of low muscle tone again. It's not that growth hormones cause the scoliosis, but it does um, make the process quicker because scoli your back gets crooked as you grow. And because she's taking growth hormones and because she grew relatively quickly, it just went from slightly crooked to really crooked in a space of a year. So then they got her to wear this brace and it was just this big, heavy plastic thing that thick went plastic. thick plastic that went across her chest down to her hips around under her armpits around um to the back and it was velcroed and had to be tight and she had to she was being asked to wear that 20 basically when she wasn't sleeping and then like on the second day of wearing it at school she fell over because it compromised her balance so she fell over and on the way down like she hit her head and and I just, it was a really hard thing to um, get her to wear. And partly because I found it really difficult to make her wear it because it was just so uncomfortable. It's harder with my broken my feet. I have my elbows with my feet. On top of that, she was also wearing AFOs, which are ankle foot orthotics which are basically the same thing as what she had around her body, but they're around her ankle. It's like an L shape, like yeah. this. Yeah, and that was Velcroed in as well. So she looked like a little plastic robot yeah. at one point when she was wearing both. So um, 
to be honest, we didn't really put the, the brace on as much as we should have because it was just too hard. She kept falling over in that. Basically, um, they said they had to operate. It was an eight hour operation and they basically... Um, they had her face down yeah, to operate down, on her yeah, back. Big cut down her back. Screws. Screws, yeah, all through her back. And they also had this... 56 screws through yeah. her back. And I think a rod to straighten her I back. think two rods yeah. on either side of the spine and donor discs. Yeah. Which, when we told her there were donor discs, she thought we said donut. <laughs> and because she loves food, she She's was like, like, what? What donut? Where is it? <laughs> like, yeah. So Ella can walk, um, but she's always had trouble walking long distances. Um, so we, as a family, we would think twice about going to something like Vivid. Um, one, because it's just too much for her to walk. She gets tired easily. And two, she falls asleep as well. Um, or even just a day out in the city. That's just That was just a really big deal for us to consider. Through NDIS, she's got funding for a wheelchair. And now we personally prefer Ella Walks because it's good for her and keeps her active. But at school, um, because she's so slow and because they go out on excursions and they don't want the support teacher always being with Ella because she obviously needs to help with the other students. So they really always ask for the wheelchair whenever they go on an excursion. It makes it easier for them and, you know, I, I'm not too fast as long as it's a little bit for a little bit more enjoyable for Ella as well. Yeah, yeah, because then she doesn't complain that she's tired and everything. So and because she's always looking down, she might not see what's around her if they're yeah going to see something. But she's amazingly for um, because the muscle tone and everything also affects your coordination. But she's pretty good. She has pretty good coordination <laughs> considering like. The first time she ever got in the wheelchair, she just knew how to, it's electronic, just knew how to drive it straight away. And she was actually, she's left-handed, but she was driving with the right hand. Yeah, she uses both hands. Yeah. The challenges that, or the list of things that Prada Willie face is like almost an endless list. And it doesn't mean that Ella will have everything on that list, but to some degree, she's got about 80 to 90%. Prada Willie is also on the autism spectrum. So she has a lot of autistic behaviors, which are OCD, so um, obsessive compulsive disorder, repetitiveness, or even ask the same question um, about anything about three or four times straight after the other. So you'll answer her and then she'll ask it again and then ask it again. So when she was little, she was given a quiet book that had all these um, fine motor skills so um, buttons and um, zippers, zippers, hair and, braiding, and one with tying shoelaces. And then so she got into this book again, and she was determined to learn how to tie her shoelaces. And that I think took a couple of years for her to really do. Geez, it was the biggest achievement. I think we made a really big deal of it, um, and she's so proud of herself. And to this day, if it's if she's in a bad mood and someone says to her, oh, you know, Ella, do you think you can help me tie my shoelaces? Because, you know, and she, it just, her mood flips. Yeah. She loves shoelaces that much. And our little cousins as well. Yeah. She tries to teach them how to do their shoelaces and she's yeah. always waiting for the little baby ones to grow up yeah. too so she can teach them as yeah. well. So. I'm doing it. I'm... On the flip side, she gets a bit obsessive about it. Um, that's, that's her OCD. That, that's one of her OCDs. So it actually became a problem at school because um, they'd be in class and she'd be asking while they're trying to learn another kid if she can tie their shoelaces. Or their shoelaces were undone and she needed to tie their yeah, shoelaces. And, because... or, or that person said no or and then she'd have a meltdown. So yeah, it's good, but sometimes, and we kind of use it to help us cheer her up or something mm. but then at the same time we have to be careful because she can get obsessive about certain things she doesn't know the the line between um what's okay and what's not so yeah and she's 14 years old and we're focusing on um saying a complete sentence <laughs> Uh, which she which is, is very good at. Yeah, getting really good at. Um, Today I said something, I think I said, that's a shame. And she said, 
what does that mean? Yeah. And I was Which, like, <laughs> yeah. And that, like, little things like that blow us away that when she's being more conversational and saying um, more words than just one or two. She's um, thinking about it and she's yeah. engaging in the conversation and yeah. not just, normally she'd just be like, that's a shame, even mm -hmm. though she doesn't know what it means. She'll yeah. just repeat it. So obviously with schooling, like reading, you know, she's starting to read, um, but that's basics, basic stuff. Um, in counting, spelling, spelling. spelling. Yeah, so basically everything. Um, developmental, it's global developmental delays. Like it's really affected every part of her development. Um, so with the laces, shoelaces, and this is one thing about Ella is that um, she's very persistent and she just, she doesn't give up. If she wants yep. to do something or learn something, she doesn't give up. And I remember she must have been, Anya was already born, so she must have been about six, uh, five or six, and she wanted to jump. Oh, yeah. And she used to hold on to the kitchen bench and like try to jump, you know, for ages and... She, it took her a year to just lift her feet off the ground. And she only learned how to walk like a year and a half before that. Yeah. Ella's usually very good at like um, trying things out for her health yeah. like she won't reject something she'll try it um, and she knows she's happy well she's she's not bothered that she has pride with syndrome no, she, no, loves no, she it. loves it she loves everything to do with doctors she and hospitals loves it so much I'm proud of pride with me too because I That's have special because of we fast soup she has a lot of love for um, everyone, especially. Like, she's, she's very sentimental. Yeah, she's very sentimental. Yeah. She's very thoughtful and yeah. caring. Really, really um, just cares a lot. Yeah.